Golden Kamui is back for its third season, continuing the story of a gold hunt in 1800s Hokkaido. The show has frequently been praised for its attitude towards research, characters, and unique marketing ideas. Here's five things you need to know about Golden Kamui. There used to be a time where demographics were taken seriously, but it's now become much more the case that publishers recognise that things are flexible. The Golden Kamui manga is published in Young Jump magazine, kind of like Shonen Jump but for adult men rather than teenage boys. But in a survey released this year, it found that while, yes, most readers were in their 30s and 40s, exactly 50% of the readership is female. This same survey also found that 72% of the readers of the Shonen series Haikyuu were female as well, so a lot of editors have had to catch up with the fact that these male targeted magazines don't really have the readership they were expecting. When we think of the past, we often think of it in monochrome, as it looks in photos. But of course, the reality is, there was plenty of colour back then, which is something that Golden Kamui's anime background director Atsushi Morikawa wanted to highlight. The show is set in the 1800s, so all that's left of these original structures are rotten wood and faded colours. So Morikawa set about reconstructing these towns and making these buildings brand new. However, he had to recognise that people already had an image of this Era. So instead of creating bright colours, he muted them somewhat to fit with the modern image of the 1800s and make it feel more believable, even if it's not historically accurate. But one thing they did want to be accurate about is their representation of the Ainu people. We often talk about Japanese people as a monolith, but there's several indigenous minority groups like the Ainu that often go overlooked. But every part of the Golden Kamui production sought to gain a real understanding. So this includes the original author, Satoru Noda, who spoke to and consulted Ainu people on events in the manga, and then the background director would send his drawings to Ainu consultants for accuracy, while the composer spoke to experts on Ainu language and culture to learn about what Ainu music sounds like so that he could incorporate it into their scenes in the show, using distinct Ainu instruments as well. But outside of the scenes with the Ainu, the music doesn't exactly sound Japanese, and that's intentional. Composer Kenichiro Suihiro was asked to make something that sounded like a western, since it's a story about a battle for gold. Suihiro was already a fan of the music of Ennio Morricone, the composer famous for writing the music for western classics like The Good, Bad and the Ugly. So he took this opportunity to use his work as inspiration. It's an odd choice for a distinctly Japanese series, but it captures the advantage adventurous nature of the anime in its own way. One of the things that unfortunately put many people off the first episode was its CG bear. But this CG bear has an interesting backstory. Not only was the CG done by IKIF, a veteran team in creating CG for anime, but it was designed by Ryosu Miyoshi, who started out his career at Capcom, creating designs for Monster Hunter games. Sumiyoshi so then took his experience at Capcom and applied it to creating the animals of Golden Kamui. Unfortunately, his realistic approach and the poor compositing meant that it stood out a bit too much. The director did say that he wanted the bear to feel different to the characters, but stated that they were still trying to figure out the balance. Thanks for watching OtaQuest in Japan. Feel free to subscribe to find out more about the art and creation of Japanese pop culture.